practicing on a Sunday is unusual, but does it, with the guys, register that this is a Tuesday-type practice, tomorrow will be a Wednesday-type practice, and then Thursday will be a, a Saturday game? Yeah, I think so. I, I think we were um, fortunate here with the way the bye week ended up. Coach Lashley was able to do a pretty good job with our scheduling, getting it set up. So they, they had a good – they had some time off, you know, that was much needed, ready to go, I think, today. Uh, they came out here and performed like a Tuesday. I thought they were physical and they were fast and um, we flew around the ball on defense and did some good things offensively. And so I, I, it, I've been part of uh, coming off a of bye week where this was a super rusty practice. I didn't feel that way today. I was excited about how we um, took the approach. I think that they're serious and they understand what's going on. Obviously, get a break in the weather has been nice. And um, so and, and anytime, honestly, you can get like a little bit of a change up, that's not always a bad thing. Um, if you don't just knock them way off their schedule, then it gives them a little chance to uh, kind of refocus on the flow of how things are going. And, and, and we, had a, we had a positive Tuesday practice, I thought. And then just with, I mean, I, we talked last week about what you do during the bye week. Just kind of how do you feel like what you did during the bye week translated into today where it's more of that game week? Preparation. Yeah, you know, the first couple of days of the bye week was all about us, right? We had to come in, we had to evaluate, we had to self-scout, we had to do all the things that are uh, important about what we want to do with our offense moving forward, right? And um, and then those second couple of days, we kind of started to get, get an opportunity to peek at our next opponent and um, implement some of the things that we wanted to do at the end of last week. We ended up treating Friday uh, morning like we would do a Monday night, which is our standard walkthrough headed into our Tuesday practice. So. That and then so we came out had a little bit kind of more more extensive walk through today than we normally do just to kind of a refresher from that Friday morning stuff um, to, to get us into the Tuesday practice so um, I don't you, you always got to be careful in bye weeks because as coaches we like to sit in there and scheme 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 and draw up and boy I've watched this much tape so I got these three better ideas that I wouldn't have had if, and you know that's that could be overrated if you're not careful right you can end up drowning yourself in scheme and that's that's not really what you want to do, right? So you, you got to identify what it is, uh, who we wanted to be, which was that self-scout piece of, of, of the beginning of last week, right? Obviously, we've got a really quality opponent, top defense in the league. You know, they're top 35 nationally, I think, and um, have really uh, performed uh, really well, and they're getting better, you know. So um, once we had an opportunity to game plan for that uh, on a smaller scale headed into the week, and then so we felt like we were – um, close to full force and back on track with what we needed to do from a um, from a schematic standpoint. Tomorrow will be our, our heavy situational day, and you know we got a little bit of a. Our, our kids don't necessarily have a jump start on that, but we as coaches have a little bit of information, and so we'll confirm some of those things tonight. Get everything practice, uh, scripted for practice tomorrow, and and be ready to go for our Wednesday practice. So unique with the fall break and everything, so, but we're doing okay. And just with uh, ECU's deep, it, is it just like one thing that they're just really good at that makes them good, or are they just sound kind of across the board that, that makes them um, good? I, you know, a little bit of both. Their personnel is good, you know, and particularly at, at, on the defensive line up front. Um, their box has got talented players. They're long, athletic. they got experience. Um, they do a good job staying sound in their gaps, and, and they're, they're a physical defense. Um, I, they, they've got a lot of multiplicity. They present to you problems from the way they do that. And, um, but, but similar to maybe like an Oklahoma or TCU, they, they get to the coverages that they want to. Um, it, it, looks, it can look like a lot of different things, and then it ends up being what it is that they want to do, and that's testament to how they practice and how they perform. And so it'll be a great challenge for us to get in there and make sure that uh, our quarterback sees what he needs to see and, and, and train, trains him up on – on uh, exactly how we're going to distribute the football on Thursday night. And then I'm sure Coach Lashley will update tomorrow with LJ and where Kamar is, but how important is whoever is running the ball that there's carryover from the Charlotte game and, and kind of the way that, that you guys were able to Yeah, I mean, I think that some of that uh, self-scout was. Boy, we, we felt like here the last couple of weeks we're starting to – uh, show up in our run game more than we want to. So certainly, um, you know, great, great run teams win championships, and that's going to be, uh, you know, that's certainly a goal of ours that we've got out there in the future. And, you know, obviously first and foremost is East Carolina and, and making sure that we have the ability to run. It's going to be a hostile environment, so being able to get in there and sometimes it's with all, with all the chaos going on and night at the Boneyard and they'll, they, they play well at home. And, boy, they're Thursday night, so will be rocking in Greenville. I know the – the reputation of that school and how their student body performs. And so, um, I, you know, we, there's going to be times in the game where we got to call it and haul it, right? We got to line up, hand the ball off, and we got to go be able to get the number of yards that we need to get and, 
and execute the way we need to with, with all the chaos going on around us that we can settle in and, and operate our offense, uh, you know, the best way that we know how. No, with Preston, you know, I mean, season opener in the OU, into Prairie View, then into TCU, then into the conference opener. Is this a good chance for him to make kind of catch his breath, re kind of calibrate a little bit for him too going into into this stretch? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that could be said for a lot of guys that are that we that we've uh, relied on heavily early in the season, but particularly Preston, right? It's it's a situation where um, everyone views this as the fifth week of the season, which it is, but we really had five weeks of fall camp before that. So right, we're coming to the end of week ten here of pretty significant grind. We got eight more laid out in front of us. So it hit at a really good time, right? The schedule did and and having him the ability he can do some of his own self scouting, self evaluation, you know, make sure that he can communicate. He's always been a great communicator about what he likes about his game, what he likes about our offense and how that fits in. And so being able to visit with him last week uh, on that, give him an opportunity to um, rest his arm in certain situations, give him some mental reps and mental days in certain situations, um, and get some valuable reps for those um, for those next in line guys that we're going to have to count on through the course of the season. Um, I thought was really positive for uh, for last week, so that certainly applies to Preston too. And um, I, he was in a really good place, did a nice job leading us today, and so I'm, I'm excited to watch him in the second half of the season. And then just the passing game in general. You know, the Charlotte game was weird. We talked a lot about the number of plays, how well you're running the ball, you didn't need to throw it. But getting the passing game going, whether that's just through Preston, whether that's through a receiver stepping up, how much do you worry about that, or do you kind of let the game kind of take care of itself? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the first goal, and this is, I know this is going to sound coachy, but it's like we got to go win, right? We got to go. This is a. This is an incredibly hostile environment with an incredibly good opponent um, on the road. Uh, we've not necessarily played particularly well on the road since we've been here. Hadn't played bad, but we just hadn't, you know, we hadn't manufactured a lot of wins in tough environments. And so, um, you know, that's a great challenge. First time going on the road. Uh, you know, we played two road games this year where we played really, really admirably and couldn't win. You know, so we, that, that can't be the case Thursday. You know, we got to go in and. And whatever the situation, we got to go win the game, you know. And so um, I do think that um, part of the self-evaluation I thought of last week is, is understanding how we're throwing the ball best, who it is that's making the plays in the situations that they are, um, what it is that Preston's most comfortable doing, and, and, and how that applies to the overall course of our offense, you know. And I do think that um, – I think if they don't call back – uh, the touchdown pass to Keyshawn, then we get a 200-yard pass game, and not, not even say it much, you know. So, but uh, I understand how these things come up. Um, I, I, we're not going to call fewer or more pass plays based on that. I don't really think that they're going to be a different breed of pass play necessarily. Um, there's not. Uh, last week was for careful reflection and observation on what it was that we were, but but not uh, something where we had to dig in there and say, okay, now this here's an issue we got to address and here's a problem that we got to make sure that we do that. Now there's places that we got to trim it up and make sure that he's most comfortable in the situations that we can, um, can execute, you know, what, what it is that he likes. But um, I, uh, I, I, I honest to God like where we're at, you know, and it's just a matter of finding it out. And, it, and, and the greatest challenge is maintaining the effort and physicality that we've played with, maintaining the ball security that we've played with, right, and, and continuing to get out there and compete for one another. You know, at the end of the day, teams, the best teams are going to win the championships, um, not necessarily the best collection of individuals. So certainly we got a talented group of individuals, but um, and, until we come together fully as a team, which uh, Preston's a guy that can help lead us do that and, and, I mean, lead us to that, and R.J. Maryland, some of those older offensive linemen, and, and you know, and then certainly on defense. But it's um, – we, that, that's our greatest challenge, I think, ahead this week, is making sure that we um, get out of there with a win, whatever it costs. And then rare Saturday without a game, you're able to watch some college football. And if so, do you watch it as a fan, or do you watch it still with that coach hat on that says, hey, they ran that with some similar guys? Or you make it yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, first of all, the first thing I like about it is being able to spend time with uh, Lauren and the kids. That's always uh, the best. Um, and, and I don't have I, – I didn't stress out over one call last night so that was nice you know there wasn't like oh man this third and seven we got to somehow convert it it's I, so I wouldn't that's nice right watch everybody else sweat through it for a weekend and then um I like to 
try to pretend like I, you know, I'm just watching this and casual observer. It's hard to just watch the ball like I did when I was a little kid. You know, it's it's more focused on okay, what are they doing? How are they defending it? What's you know, I'll, I I like to seek the situational calls during the course of the game. Okay, boy, this is important. How would they manage this clock? What are they doing with maybe this two point play or how? Okay, it's first and ten on the plus twenty. You know, how are they attacking the end zone from those locations? And so, and I've got, I got a notebook, same notebook I've had for about 15 years, and I've got probably a page worth of notes just through the various games that are fun to go back and reflect. And sometimes it's applicable to our offense, sometimes it's something maybe we use in the future, and sometimes I just find myself doodling, and, you know, I got to scratch all that stuff out too. But it's, but yeah, I, I enjoy those Saturdays, and it's good. The schedule kind of falls funny where we got kind of a couple more Saturdays here laid out where. We may, you know, hopefully can enjoy that Saturday right after a win and, and have a chance to um, to watch those games. Cool, man. So, you know, 